So when you look at this lemon tree, what's visible to the human eye are the green leaves, you see the yellow lemons, you see the stems, the branches. But what's not visible is the process of growing this lemon tree. The seeds that were planted for the lemon tree to grow, the roots underneath, the soil placed on top. Like a lemon tree, we all start off as tiny little seeds. For years, our family, friends, and community pour into us with the expectation that 18 years later, we will produce some fruit that contributes to society in some meaningful aspect. <laughs> what's visible to the human eye is our outer appearance, but what's not visible is what's underneath the soil of your soul, the roots of your mind. I would say that my childhood was pretty traditional. My family and community poured into me to help cultivate my dreams and ambitions. I had a childhood dream of becoming a news anchor. I had it all planned out. I would graduate high school, college, and then go on to be one of the top news anchors in the world. Watch out, Barbara Walters. It was a seamless process. Well, at least in my head it was. But unfortunately, my tree did not grow as planned. At the ripe age of 20, while in college in Atlanta, Georgia, I started to notice abnormal shifts. I was sleeping 15 hours a day. I didn't have energy or interest in the things that once brought me joy. And my grades were in the toilet because I didn't have the capacity to go to class or complete assignments. So I confided in my father, who suggested that I go see a psychologist. So I went to see a psychologist. And 20-year-old me, I'm thinking she's going to say something like, a shopping spree will be the cure for my discomfort. <laughs> right? Makes sense. But sadly, that wasn't the case. I can remember it like it was yesterday. She walks over to me, and I'm sitting on a long red suede sofa, almost this color. And she has a tray in her hand. And on the side of the tray says T-R-I-A-L, trial, in all caps. And there's a tray of medication, and she says, Jade, what you have is treatable, but it's not curable. You have clinical depression, ADHD, and a learning disorder. You'll have to take medication and have ongoing medical treatment for the rest of your life. And honestly, I went numb, and I didn't hear anything else she said after that. All I recall is walking to my car in a daze where I sat in a parking lot and cried. And I thought to myself, I am only 20 years old. What is she talking about? What does this even mean? So after telling my parents about my diagnosis, they insisted that I withdraw from school in the middle of the semester and move back home to Detroit, Michigan to get the proper care. So after moving home to Detroit, I stayed in a bed for about a week, allowing myself to mourn the future that I thought I would have. But then I decided that I was not going to let my diagnosis defeat or define me. So I prayed a prayer that would change the trajectory of my life. And I told God that if he would allow me to get through that difficult time, I promised I would do something to give back and dedicate my life to service. After that, I stepped into the acceptance phase. I accepted that a daily medication regimen and ongoing doctor's appointment would be indefinitely part of my new norm. I accepted the fact that I was now part of a prejudged, stigmatized community, the mentally ill community. And I accepted the fact that some days my mind would work against me, but on the bright side, at least it still worked. So with my newfound confidence, I went and enrolled at a local university to finish my senior year. I decided that instead of being a news anchor, I wanted to go into the legal career, a profession that would allow me to give second chances like I felt I was getting. So me and my big old 2.4 GPA started our law school uh, journey. So I took the law school admissions exam the first time. I failed miserably. I took it a second time. Y'all, I did even worse. I didn't think that was possible. 
I applied to six law schools. They all told me no. So after graduating a year late from college, I took the exam one more time, and I was accepted into one law school. For three years, I struggled in law school as the effects of my disabilities became more apparent. I was even on the verge of being academically dismissed twice. But I worked hard, and I graduated. Just when my tree started to grow a little fruit, the branches started to break. I started my bar exam journey. I would go on for five years, for three years, to take the bar exam five times consecutively and fail. Five times consecutively, y'all, for three years straight. And as I prepared to take the bar exam for the sixth time, the doctor found a lump in my throat. The combination of everything at the same time was almost too much to bear, and I wanted to throw in the towel. I was prepared to retake the bar exam, but I was not prepared to retake the bar exam while possibly fighting for my life. So one day, while leaving one of my doctor's appointments, I sat in the parking lot of John Hopkins Hospital in my car after leaving a biopsy appointment. And with my neck bandaged up with blood on it, I had a very candid conversation with God. And I said, God, I don't understand why I have to go through this. And I've been through so much already. But because I have to go through this, I'm not asking you to make my burden any lighter. I'm just allowing, asking you to allow me to go through this gracefully. And I heard a still, small voice whisper, not only will I allow you to go through it gracefully, I'll bring you out without a scratch, an ash, or a burn. You won't look like anything you have been through. I will make you a walking, talking testimony. So after that, I felt a peace and calmness that surpassed all human understanding and logic. So for two months straight, I went from biopsy to biopsy while working and studying for the bar exam full time. Some days, I don't even know how I made it. When I look back, I can just recall watching the ink flow down the side of my study books because I was crying so hard, thinking to myself, it really doesn't matter if I pass this exam or not, because if I have cancer, I may not be around to practice law anyway. But I renewed my mind daily, and I stayed focused. And three months later, I finally passed the bar exam. Thank you. <laughs> and had a successful operation the same week. Soon after, I was promoted to an assistant state's attorney and asked to start the Back on Track program. Back on Track was a diversion program that allowed me to give dozens of first-time felony convicted individuals an opportunity to obtain a free education, employment, and record expungement. But most importantly, a second chance. Had I passed the bar exam one, one moment earlier, I wouldn't have that opportunity because the program didn't exist. So that season in my life taught me that delayed does not mean denied. And everything happens in its perfect timing. And that is when I felt was the perfect time for me to share my journey and diagnosis with the world and redefine what mental health looks like for me. Because if I was going to have to live with it, it was going to be on my terms. And some days, that looks like depression wins. And I can't get out the bed, I can't eat, and I can't function. But I ultimately decided that it is OK not to be OK all of the time. A bad day does not mean a bad life. I adopted the motto, I would try again tomorrow, but I will not quit. So as you all heard, for years, the unexpected delays, denials, and detours stopped the sun from shining on my tree. But I knew that a development was taking place that I would need to produce fruit in those seasons and uphold the fruit during those difficult seasons. I knew that if I did not give up, there was something on the other side. I knew that my trials and tribulations were building my character and teaching me how to be resilient in the face 
of adversity. So what I hope you all take from my journey and take with you on your journey is that life will not be perfect, but that does not mean you do not have purpose. You'll be tested and tried in ways you never imagined. You'll pass some, you'll fail others, but you must promise yourself that you'll continually show up and never give up. Give yourself permission to write and rewrite your story as often as necessary. After all, you are the author and leading character. <laughs> so, we all know that lemons are not suitable for human consumption solely based on being picked. They must be repurposed, which can look like being squeezed, blended, or sliced. The most common use is lemonade. So when life throws you lemons, like this lemon tree, you must stay the course, rooted and grounded, knowing that your dreams and visions may have to be repurposed. Accepting your new reality does not mean conceding. It simply means I will use what I have adding the resources that I need <laughs> adjusting and readjusting <laughs> as often as necessary to live the life I want to enjoy. And before I leave, I want you to do one activity with me. You can please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth. No, I'm kidding. I said, it's a lawyer joke. It's a lawyer joke. <laughs> life, will not, life will not always be fair. Life will not always be fair. I will not always win. But I will always show up for myself and never give up on myself. Because I am resilient. Thank you all.